So nostalgia is interesting. It gives us the best moments from our bygone days, this rosy glow, right? Sanding away the rough edges until we can't even recall them anymore. That's usually why it's not a good thing to try go to go back and recreate your past. It's rarely as pure as you remember it. And all of this is what makes what's happening with the Warriors right now so fascinating. Kevin Durant is out with a calf strain, and as we found out from Steve Kerr last night, the injury is, quote, more serious than the Warriors initially thought. Kerr added that KD will, quote, hopefully be back at some point. My money is on Kevin returning in time for the NBA Finals, personally. They're still nearly two weeks away. But he's out now, and the Warriors have responded by basically time traveling backward to the 2015 nice. and 16 seasons. And unlike with almost everything else in life, this time, things really are as fun as we remember them. Golden State's ball movement is a dream. It's strength in numbers slogan that's real. Those Steph Curry and Klay Thompson shots are back to being absolutely thrilling because once again, so much is hinging on them. When KD is out there, it doesn't really matter so much if the ball goes in the net for Steph from half court since it's pretty certain that if it doesn't, Kevin's just gonna make it up on the next trip down. But now, without KD to bail them out, when the Warriors get into a situation like they did in last night's game two, down 17 points in the third quarter, they need every single one of those magic buckets. And the fact that Steph was doing all of that last night while battling his baby brother <laughs> only made it more exciting. Seth Curry had four steals last night, all of them from Steph, which is amazing. He also knocked in four of his seven threes, including this one to give the Blazers back the lead with about a minute to go. But then we got to see Draymond be vintage Draymond, finding a crafty way to the bucket. And that set up this final confrontation. Damian Lillard looking to make another hero three when boom, Andre Iguodala on him and... Almost stolen, Lillard stolen by Iguodala, took it out of his hands, Curry from half court, it's up, it's over. Golden State survives and wins game two. Now Lillard thought he was fouled, but the Warriors were celebrating and you can see Iggy just running straight off on the court afterward. <laughs> and look how he's holding up his hands in the tunnel, admiring them as he screamed, these mother blankers are crazy. He used the word <laughs> blankers, he said something else. The steal was, of course, another trip down memory lane for the Warriors, who have watched Iggy strip away all kinds of opponents' hopes and dreams. Remember back in 2016, that infamous Warriors Thunder Game 6? Golden State needed this Iguodala strip of KD as much as it needed Clay to go off that night. Or remember how he mugged LeBron in the finals? A little payback there from the year before. Whoop. Bye. Or this other finals gem, Kevin Love absolutely believes he has the ball in his hands as he's heading to the basket, <laughs> but he does not because of Iggy. And last night, he did it again, and the Oracle faithful got to go hoarse cheering him again, just like old times. Honestly, everyone involved here seems to understand how rare an opportunity this is to get to relive the past and actually have it be so good. And it won't last forever. Whether KD does come back or not, this season will be over in about a month, any which way. Time will march on, comes for us all. But for now, the Warriors are living in their rose-colored glasses, and the view is lovely. Scotty, how much do you think the Warriors can continue to thrive with wow. Kevin Durant out? I tell you, it's pretty scary. Uh, I, I, I think they can continue this because they have kind of reverted back to the team that we saw before KD, and they're a very tough team to defend. Mm -hmm. I think with Eagle Dollar and Draymond now hounding the ball more, getting more rebounds, pushing them into transition, it's, it's very difficult for teams to match up with Steph and Clay, and those guys are really looking for them. And it, it, it opens up their total offense. They're looking for slips. Right. The back picks are working, the step throughs, the lob pass. So it, it makes them really tough to defend. And as you see in last night's game, when Steph and Clay got it going, the other guys were able to feed off of that as well. You know, two moments very near the end of the game, when Steph and Durant ran that pick and roll, mm -hmm. Steph's reaction, he was so into it because he knew it was so much about chemistry. Then Steph, after he throws the ball up in the air, the first thing he does is run to go see Iguodala for sure. getting that. By the way, officially a block in the <laughs> official stats. They ruled it a block. Iguodala blocked the ball, not stolen. <laughs> um, that, to me, just shows how much fun these guys are having. Um, and then last night, as far as how can, how can this last, Clay Thompson gave the new lineup a name. He called them the mini death lineup. Kevon Looney right. uh, at, in place of Kevin Durant, playing a little bit different formation. Steve Kerr started that lineup in the second half last night. 
Looney was terrific in this game. He's been terrific in this series. And if Looney's going to play like this, right. and there's no sort of penalty in their lineup for not having Durant, because they're just as effective as a group, then they can keep going, I think. Can you have a mini death? I mean, death doesn't feel small <laughs> to me. I'm just saying. I'm not sure there can Can't be a be mini death. Dead. Can't be half dead. I do think, to your point, Scotty, they are more dangerous offensively yes. with Kevin Durant, but I hadn't really given it as much thought about how much harder they are in, in the way that you're talking about. And, and I just, I, I think this oh. series especially with the personnel Portland has. I mean, not to take anything away from Kevin Durant, he mm -hmm. definitely makes them a more potent offensive team. Mm -hmm. He is like an anchor for them yeah. that's all over the floor anytime they need a bailout opportunity. Let's put it in KD hand. He's going to score right. or you're going to have to come double team. Right. So th those things does work. Right. But when Andre and Draymond are out there dribbling the ball down 94 feet coming at you and you got to make a decision whether you're going to send Clay back door or over the top and there's no help. Uh, those are dangerous yeah. plays, especially when your defense is not set up.